வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் இந்த பாஸ்ட் வீக் வி லுக்ட் அட் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் போன் விச் கேன் பி கன்சிடர்ட் டு பி அ ஹார்ட் டிஷ்யூ இன் திஸ் வீக் வி டிஸ்கஸ் தி பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் சாஃப்ட் டிஷ்யூஸ் ஸோ வி பிகின் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஸோ இந்த பிக்சர் யூ சி சம் examples of soft tissues the triple helix structure of collagen for example in this video we will be looking at various constituents of tissues we'll be looking at collagen how much collagen is present in each type of biological material elastin how much elastin is present in various types of biological materials and proteoglycans so what are soft tissues different soft tissues exist ligaments tendons cartilage and all of these are composed of collagen elastin proteoglycans and other glycoproteins and they have different functions the important function of collagen is to provide strength or toughness and flexibility so collagen provides the flexibility elastin provides strength and stretchability like elastic the word elastin similar to elastic so it pro- it's able to stretch stretchability proteoglycans provides firmness and then there are glycoproteins like laminins and fibronectin that hold tissue together they are also called as cell adhesion proteins adhesion means what adhesion means to adhere together right to stick together to hold on together right? cell adhesion protein so cartilage for example has about 20 30% collagen about 10 20% uh, proteoglycans and some about 50% sorry uh, cartilage for example has about 50% collagen right and uh, about 20% proteoglycans uh, ligaments have about 60 70% uh, collagen or maybe even more tendons also have a comparable amount of collagen but uh, as we will see in future slides although the amount of collagen is similar between ligaments and tendons it is a structure that differentiates the function we will discuss that in a little bit so collagen is one of the most abundant protein in the body is present throughout the body is present everywhere practically so it makes up about one third of the total amount of protein in the body it is the basic structural element for both soft tissues and hard tissues you may think that it's not forming part of bones for example it does actually collagen forms a very important part of bones and uh, how they are aligned to the bone axis determines the strength of the bones something that we have not discussed in the bone uh, lecture but something that we can now mention collagen and how they are aligned to the bone affects the strength of the bone so it forms a structural element for both soft tissues and hard tissues and it has a unique triple helical structure okay. it gives a mechanical integrity and mechanical strength right. and uh, it performs the crucial role of uh, load carrying in you know in blood vessels in skin in bones in tendons and it turns out that it comes in many types only type 1 and 2 are mentioned but it also comes in other types not mentioned here type 1 is found in abundance in ligaments tendons and bone type 2 is mainly found in cartilage and here the size based analysis of collagen and structure are uh, discussed so if you have a fibril so if you take a fibril of a tendon and uh, you subject it to microscopy what you will see is microfibril 
that are at uh, the nanometer resolution or hundreds of nanometer resolution. Then you see tropocollagen and then you have the unique triple helix structure of uh, collagen at a resolution of one and a half nanometers. So, at different scales you can observe the function of the collagen fibers and uh, it turns out their alignment and how much crimp they have defines the function of the tissue in which they are present. As with all the other biological materials that we have discussed, the properties of collagen are determined by the structure and composition. Remember in the beginning of the course we said that we are mostly interested in the structure function relationships. We are mostly interested in documenting and discussing the relationship between structure and function, between anatomy and physiology. Mostly it turns out that function determines structure in many cases, right? we discuss. Function defines form or function dictates form, something that we have discussed. In some cases form also dictates function. So, uh, both of these are present in different cases, but we have discussed some of these previously. So, likewise for collagen also uh, the properties are determined by structure and composition. It has a unique triple helical structure that uh, allows it the unique characteristic strength and resistance to mechanical stress. Right. So, what is presented here? is uh, an electro micrograph of uh, collagen fibers in a ligament so, and you can see their characteristic waviness right crimp like you can see this you can see this right you can see here right waviness or crimp characteristic it's it's unique for collagen the straightening of uh, this waviness or crimp under stress plays an important role plays a crucial role in the biomechanics or the mechanical property of the tissue in which collagen is present and collagen is present in many different tissues we just discussed that it is present in tendons, it is present in ligaments, it is present in cartilage, it is present practically everywhere all, in many different tissues. It is present in many different tissues because it is one of the most abundant proteins. Is it not? And it turns out that collagen is also resistant to degradation by enzymes. So, it is one of the longest lasting proteins in the human body. So, it is not something that is degraded by enzymes so easily, it is something to keep in mind. Here what is shown is the stress strain curve for tropocollagen, collagen and tendon. right? Of course, uh, these estimates are by measurements of elongation of helical pitch of the collagen triple helix in the tropocollagen and in the collagen fibril this was uh, determined using an x-ray diffraction technique. Okay. And what you observe is that in general suppose I am performing a linear regression, I will get a line like that for uh, tropocollagen and a line like that for collagen. Suppose I find the slope, right? suppose I try to actually this is not exactly the modulus, but suppose I was to linearize this and find the slope or whatever is an equivalent of the slope of the modulus then you find that the modulus of tropocollagen is about 3 times as much as the modulus of the collagen fibril. And in blue you see the of course, by the way in blue what you see is not a linear curve. So, this is for a tendon. 
So, that is for example, at some part about maybe from here to about here maybe somewhere here maybe maybe uh, a linearized version, but uh, clearly in this region the modulus is not linear. Okay. We will discuss this in future slides and in future classes. Okay. Of course, uh, the tendon stress strain curve does not exactly uh, resemble or uh, relate easily with collagen because the tendon is composed not just of collagen, there are other things, there are other components of the tendon tissue. So, the whole tissue property is a function of many of these, many of these properties. Okay. Elastin, elastin is found in abundance in blood vessels that are elastic, in particular in arteries, right. Arteries will have to expand a lot. For example, the aorta which is the biggest artery, aorta is the biggest artery, it undergoes a lot of deformation, a huge amount of deformation. That is, when the heart is pumping blood, pure blood through the aorta, it expands a lot. Yet, when it is receiving, when the heart is receiving impure blood or when there is no pumping through aorta, the aortic valve is closed for example, aorta is relatively small. So, it keeps expanding. So, that happens every time the heart pumps. So, this expansion that is because of the presence of elastin, it is present in lungs, skin, bladder in many other tissues. Right. What is its uh, function? Elasticity, right? Resilience and elasticity to the tissue. So, elastin, the name sounds or gives a clue to its uh, important function, which is elasticity. It imparts or it provides with elasticity. In arteries, an important function is to allow for the pressure wave propagation and blood flow. So, it is composed of tropoelastin molecules that are cross linked by another protein called lysine. Here what is uh, plotted is a stress strain curve and of course, what you immediately realize is that uh, the loading and unloading curves are not the same. Of course, we cannot expect the loading and unloading curves to be similar there is indeed an area, right? that area for example, that area that is now shaded in red for example, right? that is this area that is now shaded in red, that is the hysteresis loop for this essentially because of the viscoelastic nature of this tissue. In the previous week, we saw what is viscoelasticity and developed and discussed some models of viscoelasticity. Remember, bone is viscoelastic and many other tissues and materials, biomaterials or biological materials in the human body are viscoelastic. Okay. Likewise, elastin is also viscoelastic as you will see from this stress strain curve. Proteoglycans are huge or large molecules that are composed of one central core protein that is shown in red here for example. This is the central core protein, this is the central core protein that is marked in red here okay. with what are called as gag side chains, gag means glycose, glycose amino glycan side chains with which they have uh, covalent bonds. Right? These are all the side chains right? that are now marked in blue. Okay. These uh, uh, glycose amino glycan contains sugar because of this there is a negative charge 
on the protein core. This helps to retain water. And you see many of these, you see many of these in a proteoglycan like this, right. What is shown here is only the zoomed out version of just one of these, right. Again, this composition and structure contributes to its important function, okay. And it turns out that compressive stiffness increases with the amount of gag concentration per unit volume of course. And modulus of elasticity as a function of uh, the concentration of gag, if we plot, we see that as gag increases, the modulus keeps increasing. You can try to model this and you see in general as the gag concentration increases, the strength or compressive modulus increases. And it turns out that gag concentration in general increases with the depth of cartilage. So, tissues compressive stiffness increases with the gag concentration and the depth of uh, the concentration in cartilage or how much cartilage is present, right. So, in this video, we looked at some of the important constituents of uh, soft tissues. Specifically, we looked at collagen and its unique characteristics, elastin and its properties and uh, proteoglycans and how concentration of uh, the gag in proteoglycans affects its properties. Remember throughout we have been discussing about structure function relationships, composition function relationships. So, that theme in the course will continue. Right? So, with this we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention.